Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS statistics lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to walk through the idea of dredging. So dredging comes from this package called MUMIN, M-U-M-I-N. And again, what dredging does, to sort of recap what we talked about in the conceptual video, is it basically takes the OLS model that you set up as what they call your global model, which is basically every variable that you think is important, and then it creates every possible subset and combination of these. It calculates what's called AIC, which is the ACIC information criteria. It gives you a weight, and it gives you a delta, which is basically just how that um, model changes. And then it allows you to look and see how the different models compare to each other. And this can be useful for confirming your models, your variable selection process. So again, we're going to assume that you've gone through those first two steps, three steps, where you've you know, thought critically about your data, you've explored the relationships with scatter plots and correlations, and you've created this global model um, already and looked at those to look at your coefficients and your p-values. And now we're just going to use dredging to sort of, again, as another line of evidence that what we've done is correct. So the first thing that we need to do is set up all of our, all of our information. So in terms of packages, I'm going to be using the Georgia data set from GIS tools, um, M, lowercase u, M, capital I, N, Moomin. This has the dredge function that we're going to be using. And then we have this spatial reg and SPDEP packages for when we do the spatial data in the next step. But for now, we're going to be using GIS tools and MUMIN. So I'm going to run this to get our packages all set up. Good and good. Now we have to go through the process of setting up our first model. And so I'm going to use this, the Georgia data set. So I'm going to call in Georgia. Okay. Now, really quickly, just to make sure I don't have any typos, I always like to do the names. Okay. So, again, I'm going to kind of assume that we've gone through our due diligence here um, and that you would have looked at stuff. So the idea that we're going to be attempting to model here is this percent poverty. And I've gone through my due diligence and I've looked at percent rural, percent bachelors, percent elderly, and percent African American. And I'm going to use those four variables as my independent variables. These are the things that I've thought are related, that I've looked through and figured out, yes, indeed, they are related. And now we're going to go through and actually set up the, um, the model. So again, we're going to be using this dredge function from MUMIN. Just to look at the help here. OK, so this is the documentation for MUMIN. And you'll see that it generates a model selection table for model combinations. All right, so again, this is that idea that we're looking at all possible combinations of variables as a way to, again, reinforce our understanding of what model we picked. So in terms of the arguments, the one, the only one that we're really going to worry about is this idea of global dot model. All of the others here, betas, evaluates, ranks, fixed, all of those, we're going to keep those set as defaults. Um, we don't need to worry about those because these are these are pretty good uh, basic um, defaults. So global model is the is the parameter we're going to worry about. And you can see that it's a fitted global, in quotes, model object. So this is going to be our original um, model that we're going to use. So we now know what dredge looks like. What we're going to do, I'm going to actually close that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our first model. So we're going to call this OLS, and we're going to use the LM function from stats. Okay. 
since that takes in a formula, right? It takes in data. Right? These are the two parameters that we've talked about for OLS. The formula that we're going to pass in, of course, I just erased the names, right? I'm going to copy. We want to. We're predicting percent poverty, and we're doing that based on percent rural plus percent elderly plus percent African American right one two three we're predicting percent poverty one two three four okay and then we're also going to throw in median income as well. Right, so the idea is that some combination of these are going to give us a reasonable model. Now our data is going to be the GEORGIA at data. So if we run this, we shouldn't get any errors, which is perfect. So if we do summary of OLS, Right, you'll see here that we get a couple of things. Right, We have our model here, and it looks like we actually made some pretty decent predictions here. Everything, this is marginally significant. Right, this is marginally significant. But you can see that all of our variables are within a reasonable value of significance. Right, All of our estimates are, are non-zero, although median income is pretty close to zero. Um, so this you know, we're talking about a change in median income changes it less than one third of 1%, right? Because this is percentage. So, you know, we're not, we're not changing it very much. Um, so we might consider removing median income at some point. But for right now, what we want to do is we want to keep those in there. And we're going to use dredge. Gonna dredge to confirm variable and best model. So the way that we do this, again, we're gonna use the m u m i n mumin, and we're gonna call in the dredge function. Dredge requires global dot model, and that's gonna be OLS, and that's the only variable we need. So I'm gonna run this, and it's going to crash. Oh, I guess it didn't crash. Um, one thing that you do want to do here, and I actually I'd expected it to crash, is you do want to set your options to na dot action b na dot fail. This will cause the dredge to uh, to not have problems. Okay, so what do we get as a result? We get this global model. So this right here, again, this is what we've already dictated to run. And it gives us our four independent variables and our dependent variable. And it says what data set we're using. So we've already kind of seen this multiple times. But what we get that's new here is this model selection table. And you can see down here, we already specified that it ranked them based on the corrected AIC. So it's the key information criteria. Okay. So, what do we see here? Well, we see that we have our four models. Our best model right here, again, is including all of the variables. Our second best model here includes everything but percent elderly. We have this model here that includes everything except for percent of um, rural, right? It cut off the rest of it, but PCTRL is ours percent rural, right? And so we can see the AIC values here. Um, I would probably say that our best model would actually be this one right here, only because again with AC with ACIC. Right, we generally want to see a, a 
the delta to be um, the delta is less than two, and we have a variable that probably means that this variable isn't uh, contributing much. So I would say our best model is actually going to be this model right here: median income, percent African American, and percent elderly. So this would be the model that I would use going forward. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stop this video here where we've identified you know, our best set of variables here. And then we're going to move forward in the next video talking about setting up the um, spatial variables, how to determine what, which spatial model we should use. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please reach out.